In this video, I wanted to talk about being and vibration and breathing. And if you've read Joseph's book, Being and Vibration, that's one of my favorite books. It has a very subtle, beautiful energy to it. And if you don't have that book, uh, I really recommend getting a copy. Uh, there's so much light and, and beingness and breath in that book that it it's the book that he's written that I appreciate the most as an introduction to his work, and it's the one I always recommend to folks. And if you have uh, problems finding it, because uh, it's been out of print for a few years, it's supposed to come back into print, um, but if you have no other source, you can always find it as an e-book on Google. It's very affordable that way. So I'm here in the forest, the remnant of a forest in this part of the southeast and it's a place that I come if I want to breathe and from Joseph's teachings you would know that every kind of life form has a vibration is a set of vibrations and and it's a different kind of people the tree people the stone people the deer people, different plant tribes, different crawling, swimming, flying ones. And these all have their own vibration. They all have their own beingness. They also have a quality of breath around them. And if you look at Joseph's tradition or you look in the Sufi tradition, which I also highly recommend, getting familiar with, there is a lot of emphasis placed on the breath. And certainly when you look at yogic traditions, there's a lot regarding breathing, pranayama, working with the breath, etc. But there's a, a quality and an understanding of what the breath is. The breath is not just this inhalation and exhalation. To me, the physical breath is a sine wave is a vibratory way that the soul stays with the body. If there's life that's manifested, it has to have an oscillation. And to me, that's, that's part of what the physical breath is. If we weren't oscillating in our breathing, uh, then we wouldn't be able to be here for very long. So there is a quality of, of the breath that tells us that, that there's life and manifestation with us because it has this oscillation. But beyond that, if you can imagine that, let's say you're only in the city, and certainly there's a kind of breath that's there. Um, but typically, like in a large city, all the buildings are totally vertical in Chinese Feng Shui and other systems, this would be Sha energy. The energy is coming straight down. And if you look at uh, pagodas or other Chinese, uh, Japanese style buildings, you always have this gentle, curvy, there's, a, there's an invitation for the energy to slow down and to become one with its environment before coming all the way down. So I view this falling energy as, as an aspect of the breath. And to be in a city is almost a very harsh type of breath because it makes you feel contracted. And it contributes to the feeling that you can't relax and that you're rush, rush, rush. Just the kind of feelings that I get when I go to a big city. All the people, all the things, all the condensedness of what's happening there. Whereas when I go to an open space, there's more of an air quality and that air quality lets me feel the earth quality more. And those qualities let me feel where there might be water. And, and just my ability to perceive what's around me, I'm more open. And what I'm saying to you and I want you to get is that feeling of openness. That feeling that you could just reach out and connect and perceive 
It's almost kind of a Qigong type flow to it, the interchange. That this ability to expand your awareness, and it's not, it's not a mental thing, it's an energetic thing, that these are what the mystics talk about, these qualities and abilities when the mystics talk about the breath. The breath is not just your inhalation and exhalation. That's, that's at the level of, of system maintenance, of keeping you manifested on the planet. And there are certain things that you can do just working with the sort of mechanical nature of the breath, focusing at the top of the breath and the bottom and just the whole process breathing in your belly versus expanding at the chest, the different feelings that you can get. So there's certainly a lot that you can learn from doing breath work that way. But what I'm talking about are more the subtle currents, the subtle currents of life, of the flow of energy between things. And for me, it really helps to be in a place in nature, a place where there's at least some distance between you and the, the traffic, although there's not a whole lot here. There's still traffic uh, rumbling off to the side of me. Uh, and it can be really difficult to get to a place where you, you can't hear any traffic uh, these days. You have to really go a long way from the cities. But just to be in a place like this that's, that's a remnant is so healing, is so rejuvenating and helps you to go into this place of calmness and my experience with with acupuncture and Reiki and many different healing systems is that a main enabler to self-healing and by extension self-realization is the ability to relax the ability to have all the body systems just come back to their normal rhythm to come back to a calm state. And it's at that point that we can begin to unwind whatever energies are not harmonious with us. And the interesting thing to me is that when you begin to achieve a realization of this is what the breath is, it's this expandedness, it's this sense that connects me to other things, other places, once you've achieved that or, or gotten some realization of that, you can then take that kind of breath. And it's an octave or two higher than just the mechanical breath maybe that you were doing before, and you can direct that breath to different parts of your body. And many myst mystical traditions do this. They take the breath and maybe direct it different parts of the chest, and then up to the head, what does that feel like? And then down to the hara center, what does that feel like? And one of the main messages in this video is that if you desire to develop spiritually or as a true human being, then the best way you can do that is to do some work, some effort. You'll see this in Joseph's teachings. He says, <clears throat> work is worship. If we can take our expanded sense of the self and of the breath and focus on a practice daily is good a couple times a day might be better even if it's only five minutes i think i read uh in the last day or so that three to five minutes of meditation has similar benefits to 20 minutes so if we can get some practice where we're directing our breath our awareness our sense of freedom and beingness to our body first and then if you remember the arc of ascent and descent through the five elements, then another practice could be to direct that set of impressions to relationships, our loved ones, friends, family, maybe ascended beings even, to offer all beings the wish that they may be well and may be happy. Those are the kind of practices that you know, one day you may do your practice and it's okay, and another day it's great, and another day not so much. But the important thing is to get into the rhythm, to use breath and to use the rhythm. If you can get into that as a habit, then if you started at the beginning of 2013 and went to, through the whole year with some kind of regular practice, 
it'd be very difficult for you to not feel different in a year's time. That there would be some growth, there would be some transformation there. So I'm offering you this sense of what the breath is, this ability to tune into vibration. If you have a natural place, even if it's a small park that you can get to on a regular basis, please go. If it's springtime and it's a nice day or it's warm enough, take a blanket, something, lay down on the ground. Connect with the earth, connect with the air. You know, when's the last time you've spent... uh, half an hour cloud watching. Cloud watching is such an opening kind of uh, experience. It's almost like a shamanic transformative experience because when you look at the clouds, they trigger what does that look like to you. It's kind of a Rorschach test for the uh, Rorschach uh, pumping for the inner landscape. It can trigger all kinds of movement of energy and, and getting things in a way that they can be healed. So just encourage you to seek a natural place, seek the experience with the breath, get into Joseph's materials. If you have a um, local community that's with the Dances of Universal Peace, I really recommend you spend time there because the Dances of Universal Peace are, are really built on these understandings, these foundational principles of the breath, of rhythm, of embodiment, of movement, of being grounded on the earth and growing spiritually. It's just a wonderful experience. So, thank you. Mm-hmm.